Perfect. Uh, so we are armors. <laughs> uh, so we are. Oh, I need a. Somebody needs to mute there. Okay, I got it. Thank you, sir. So we're, uh, we're we are we are going to be playing a one shot for you today. But before we do that, we're going to give a big thank you to Storm Giant Games for putting all this together and uh, doing the uh, Crowd Control Expo. I know I've been jumping into a bunch of panels and uh, I've been really enjoying everything that they've. They've everybody they've invited, everybody that they've brought in. So um, a big thank you to them. I also want to real quick say uh, a, a quick thank you to all my players. And I'm going to do that and my assistant GM. Uh, I pay him nothing. He just uh, <laughs> is, is, is here by uh, request only. Um, but we're going to start with our players who are going to be playing for you today. The adventure that they are going to be playing is a one-shot. It's a, a noir adventure that I wrote for uh, a charity fundraiser, actually for a cat cafe, but I've kind of retooled it. And uh, it's going to have slightly less cats, still probably more than the usual amount of uh, cats in an adventure, which is the... Uh, I'm the dungeon meowster, so that's my... Uh, it's a brand thing. I, I can't get away from it. But... Um, I'm really excited to play this with uh, with our players. So if you guys could give me your name, your nombre, uh, what, where to find you if, you if you're doing fun and cool things uh, in the Dungeons & Dragons role-playing game space. And uh, three, the character that you're going to be playing today, just a little bit, just, just a taste, wet their whistle so that they are excited. And we're going to start with uh, Tess. Okay. Hi. I don't normally go by my first name online, but I do now. I'm Perfect. Tess, and uh, <laughs> you can find me on my Twitch channel um, in Berlock, I-N-B-E-R-L-O-C-H. I do D&D streaming every other Saturday, Sunday, and lately I've been picking up some slack from uh, the Goblins and Growlers crew during the virus times, hosting a one-shot, or supposed to be a one-shot, on Mondays. And we are very thankful for that. Of course. The most. Thanks, Tess. Uh, we're going to jump. Uh, I'm going cl clockwise in the organization it is on my screen. So let's let's do Seth. Hi, I'm Seth. Um, I'm a comedian in Atlanta. I'm also uh, the Dungeon Meowster's brother. Whoa. And I'm happy to be here. I know, a reveal, a big reveal. <laughs> well, that was very early on, too. Yeah. You know, were you going to save that for the end? Yeah, I was after, like, during the death sequence, so it would be more impactful. Uh, Brother, no! <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I do uh, comedy in Atlanta. You can find me, uh, I have a YouTube account, Mantooth901, and uh, my Twitter account is Mr. Magnet, M-R Magnet. Uh, today I'm going to be playing a reporter whose name is Smiles Happy. And Smiles Happy uh, runs a newspaper called The Uplifting Post. And he focuses on uh, happy, optimistic stories. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, Tess, I uh, should also, real quick, warn everyone that I am very ill-experienced in D&D, but I'm happy to be here. <laughs> it's perfect. It's like a classic convention game. Inver, Inver. Uh, you can call me Tess. It's our, the cat's already out of the bag. Thanks for being on brand for me. Uh, <laughs> who's the character you're playing? So I'm playing Kith Grace, my inquisitive rogue, who's also a gnome. Kith, K-I-T-H? Yes. Perfect. And uh, next up is uh, Amethysto. You can call me Gabe, uh, or oh. Gabriel. <laughs> um, uh, hi, I'm Gabriel. Um, I'm one of the uh, content creators and dungeon masters for Goblin and Growlers, as well as uh, I do all the audio mixing uh, and music production for uh, the podcast Quid Pro Roll. So little, there's a little button and a shirt. Look at those. Brand. Um, super fun with that. Uh, I also try to do a lot of charity work and work with a, uh, a summer camp for at-risk kids. Um, which we're doing like virtual summer camp stuff. This is pretty interesting. Yeah. Interesting time we're in. Cool. Uh, character I'll be playing will be Mistafel, the uh, Tabaxi Bard uh, street magician. Um, grew up as a orphan and uh, is constantly trying to convince himself that they're not really, really horrible at what they want to do. Okay, perfect. Uh, I spelled Mistafel the da like a Danish way, so I added like three silent J's. I hope you. I hope that's perfect. Okay. 
Uh, and then uh, Eric. Hi, hello friends. Um, I'm Eric Poach. Uh, I am uh, part of the D&D improv group called Whose Roles It Anyway? And our whole deal is like we, we play games in front of audiences and the audiences come up with all of our monsters and spells and magic items and NPC quotes and all that jazz. Um, and yeah, you can find us on Facebook. Just search for Whose Roles It Anyway? Um, and uh, today I'll be playing Dan Rolando, a, uh, a paladin who's part of the 501c3 nonprofit uh, Samaritan Mentors Initiative to Thwart <laughs> Evil, aka Smite. Um, and we travel <laughs> around to uh, to orphanages, uh, you know, doing youth outreach, making sure kids with edgy backstories don't grow up and become super villains. It's important. It's important. Mm -hmm. Not enough groups doing what Smite does out there, and it's yeah. just. Yeah. You know, it's, so um, <clears throat> lastly, we've got Phil. Phil uh, is here. I'm going to point to him on my screen. This could be pointing to anyone for anyone else. Uh, so Phil <laughs> Phil is going to, uh, if we have any technical difficulties and I or a player drops out for whatever reason, Phil's our substitute. Phil also is, uh, until then, he's our unpaid intern. If anybody needs anything, you <laughs> yell at it, Phil. He'll do it for you. But image, uh, if you need a random fact, uh, whatever you need. Phil, could you bring me some of those those, those those little biscuits with like with like the jelly on the inside? Oh, of course. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just oh, man, the back of a mirror. Yeah, yeah. We call them biscones. Oh, and, oh that's right. And uh, lastly, I'm I'm the dungeon meowster. I'm Olan. I'm one of the goblins and growlers crew. Uh, we have uh, done a couple of panels, which you can find on the uh, for for Crowd Control Expo, which you can find at the uh, Storm Giant. Um, Twitch page. So that's super exciting and we're exciting to be here. I'm going to jump us right into our narrative. Like I said, it's a noir adventure. These people right here are about to experience the, uh, the, uh, the, the 40s noir like never before. How is that exactly? Um, we're going to find <laughs> out. You guys know as much as me. So we begin at the beginning. And that would be our, uh, in, in, we're inside of a town. It's called uh, Zorpheus. Um, Morpheus, yeah. but with a Z? Yeah, with a Z or an X. It. It's really your choice. And I like the, the, X. Uh, the uh, you, you are traveling to an orphanage and in Zorpheus. And you're, um, those, if one of you is traveling because you are trying to put together a, a feel-good story for one of the orphans who are being adopted. Uh, one of you is traveling because you were recently hired to be the magician at the orphanage for this uh, occasion of adoption. Um, one of you already already is working uh, at the orphanage uh, currently as a um, as a uh, no no character change. We'll do it. We'll do it. Uh, but uh, let me let me just. She's at the orphanage. We'll start there. She's, you're already at the orphanage, and okay, one good. of you is, uh, you know, making sure that it's it's getting close to the end of the month. You got to qualify all of your five hundred one qualifications, and so you're going to make sure you you put some children through some Rorschach tests and make sure they don't turn out to be super villains. Get that quote. Yeah, there's a lot of tragic backstories. So you're you're uh, you're making your way to the orphanage when you notice that uh, there is a, uh, a private eye who's outside speaking to the owner of the orphanage. Uh, the owner is, um, is named Fortune, and she seems quite distressed. She's uh, talking in hushed tones, but kind of a little bit frantic. Uh, and she's talking to this private eye. His name is uh, Samuel. Uh, and he's kind of, he's just jotting down notes. It's uh, a light rain. You're in kind of the late afternoon, but the gray cloud cover of being a port town makes it to where everything kind of has this grayish hue and, uh, everything seems a little co colorless. Mm -hmm. Uh, the private investigator, Samuel takes a long drag on his unlit cigarette and then, uh, and then looks down at it and, and lights it with magic and then continues to take notes and then he's like closes the notebook you see him kind of like say something softly to the woman as he walks away into the night uh, pulling his hat brim kind of low covering his eyes god he's cool mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh you all you all are coming walking up to the orphanage uh, as this is happening man i bet he has a really kick-ass internal monologue Let's see what it is. Uh, let me just tune in. <laughs> okay. 
You're a little late, aren't you? I really, I uh, really should have uh, worn underpants today. It's raining quite hard. <laughs> okay, there it was. We hey, in. cool. How does he keep smoking that cigarette in this rain? It keeps going out. He just keeps. He just <laughs> burns through them. They just spent an hour and a half debating cigarette mechanics. <laughs> <laughs> He's rolling real low on these cigarette okay, drinks. Cool, yes. <laughs> Yeah. Um, well, so I've 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 been here before. Like I've made the rounds. Yeah. Uh, the orphanage before. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go up to Fortune and be like, Hey, Fortune, what's up? What's the deal? What's oh, up? oh, Dan. Uh, Don't mind my cat, Fortune. <laughs> All There's so many alley cats around this orphanage. It, yeah. you, I'm glad that they flocked to you. It means you're a kind soul and kind heart. Uh, thank you for for coming. Uh, unfortunately. We've we've had something come up that uh, we weren't expecting, and and that might result possibly in a super villain type backstory scenario. <laughs> yes, I know this is something that you are very guarded against. So I, I I felt the need to to tell you one of our orphans, Pearl. She was supposed to be adopted uh, yesterday, but unfortunately the adoptee, the the adoptive father, never showed up. And oh God. Today, private investigator came, and it seems that he's gone missing. So you're telling me we're dealing with double abandonment issues? Yeah, the, 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 exactly that. And we all know that when it when it's two doubles, it becomes a, a super abandonment issue. <laughs> Perfect or, for a super villain. We have five teenagers go necromancer this week. I can't. I can't lose another one. Sorry to jump in here, but um, did I overhear that this child did not get picked up? Yeah, exactly. The the father uh, who's supposed to adopt her. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's going to be a problem for me. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I already wrote a story. I already wrote a story about that child being adopted. Oh, your your smiles, your smiles. You you uh, yeah. I that interviewed me earlier. Um, yeah, I, I spoke with you. Yeah, on the record, right? Yeah. I, I, uh, yeah. She, she wasn't adopted. I don't, I don't know what else I can do for you. What the fuck? That story's airing. That it's going out in the paper tomorrow. Uh, well, I don't know what to say. She, she. You need to fix this. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm gonna the, come over as I'm, I'm slowly trying to set up. Uh, a couple like cases on on wheels, and I'm gonna uh, stop and pull out like a, a couple flowers and bring them over to the reporter and be like, "You could always wish for something better, please." Some, something. Is it like clapping our hands, hands on his toes, like clap our hands to make a wish? <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, so of course. That a component. You must clap your hands. All right. Uh, as you as, as you do that, uh, I kind of turn around, not sure what to do. I flick the flowers, and they change from blue to purple. Like, huh? See, ah. anything if you Dance set your lights. mind to it is possible. That was pretty sweet. <clears throat> no, that was really. Su- I want to do a piece on you. Uh, I, I would, I would, I would be honored. All right, we'll talk later. But um, <laughs> uh, I'm a little but, mad right now. Uh, I'm gonna to, smoke a cigarette. To your 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 frustration, and I, I would recommend smoking your cigarette as far away from this orphanage as possible. Um, <laughs> That's too late. Light up in the middle of the orphanage. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did 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 Mistafel put like? Is there is there gas cans when Mistafel's like trolley <laughs> of magic items? Yeah. <laughs> there's there's there, there's a couple tanks of compressed air and 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 helium for balloons. Okay. Um, oh yeah, so he's like he's like smoke your cigarette as far away from the source. Yeah, <laughs> I've, 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 I've personally seen years. all right three I, burning orphanages this week. It's been horrible. Fine, okay, fine. I I down my cigarette in one pull, <laughs> and I flick the stub away from the wagon. <laughs> the head. Um, that's very well. That's what you wanted? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, but I do know what what I what I what I truly want is um, it sounds like uh, 
to save your story, to save this, this, the story of this, of this child as well. I'm listening. Um, perhaps uh, this gentleman here in the, with the, the Paladinian armor and uh, everything. Wow, just noticing him. <laughs> oh, hi. He's perhaps, <laughs> perhaps they'll be able to uh, 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 help. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Dan Forth Rolando, my friend called me Dan, is on the case. Yeah. Well, hey there, Dan. I'm Smiles Happy. Are we, are we, are we friends, Dan Forth? Well, yes, absolutely. We are friends. Oh, oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. Had me going there for a moment. Pretty easy uh, guy to get along. The name is Mister Fell at your service. Oh, uh, uh, and and also with you, I do. Have <laughs> <it>. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I assume this is some like nearby village like a uh, uh, thing of greeting. Uh, in, in, indeed, yes, I'm sure uh, it is. So, 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 so Fortune, uh, I brought so many scrolls of PowerPoint illusions, and they're going to be useless on a kid that's been abandoned twice. Right. So let's uh let's start digging. Uh, right. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we gotta find this kid. Emerging from around the corner in a bright pink princess dress. Hut two, <laughs> hut two, let's go, orphans. I need you organized by height and then alphabetized. There's not every day you get a magician, and you can't all be depressed just because one of you didn't get picked. Dang, she's, she's like, whipping wow. them when we're kids. <laughs> oh, wow. Kiff, Kiff. Uh I'm so glad that you're here. I uh, these these people were exchanging greetings of foreign nature to me, and uh, I'm I, you know I'm not great with people, um, especially when one of them's a reporter and everything I say is on the record. It worries me. I'm writing this, this down. I know you're not great with the talking. Why don't you sit down with the children and watch the nice ma- magician? And we'll get to the bottom of this. Oh, oh, th- as yeah. you're as you're saying that, uh, I panic a little bit and squeeze a. a, a <laughs> The, the, the deck of heart cards I'm holding and the cards just flutter across the room. <laughs> yeah, huh. everybody clap. It was great. Clap. Yes, quite. <laughs> when's, when's the prestige? Um, now, can I uh, help you guys? Let me know, something? please. <laughs> yeah, it seems like we got a missing kid. And I got a story going up tomorrow. Well, no, no, no this, uh, I, I, I believe the, the, the kids are still here. We have a missing parental figure oh geez you're right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. sorry I'm i got so many stories i got so many stories that i'm working on you're writing a story about a missing kid before one goes missing what's that that's possibly genius In this age of communication you gotta so. have yeah you gotta have draft stories ready to go hmm. i got stories for everything get stories for days Stories for days. I got oh I got a story right now about, in the bank of a, ma- of a children's magician getting crushed by an anvil. It's ready to go if that happens. I'm looking up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, quite. Uh, so I think so, I need to go get dressed. <laughs> uh, and I will disappear off to uh, not any not behind anything in particular, just sort of hiding behind the different cupboards that I brought. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they like putting on a top hat and other accoutrement. So um, both uh, Kiff and Dan, you all are well aware that Samuel, the private eye of the city, has never solved the case. Uh, this is something that's just <laughs> never, he's not once solved the case. He has a, a lot of open cases. So he uh, will tell everybody, like, they're not unsolved. They just... Not yet. Well. Hasn't filed the paperwork. <laughs> right. right. And if there's the one thing that my order cannot stand, <laughs> it's unfiled paperwork. Yeah. Dun, dun. Uh, so, Kiff, is it? Uh, how, yeah, ma- what can ma- I do you for? Ma- ma- Dan, Dan Rolando, uh, mm. smite officer. Uh, how, how long have you been working at this here home of wayward children? Well, let's see. I got hired for five silver about a month ago mm-hmm. to figure out which one of these little gems took a cookie out of a cookie jar. And darn it, if they aren't crafty. But, and have you noticed uh, any any strange behavior in the children uh, lately, especially Pearl, the one where the child discussion? Have you noticed any like 
you know, she acted sad, strange, been murdering cats. Well, you know, aside from chance. the fact that she's depressed because she is, she's been living at an orphanage. No. Okay, just the baseline or, orphan depression. Got it. Got it. Got it. All right. Baseline. <laughs> But uh, Fortune, if we're going to be waiting for the magician, maybe you can fill them in a little more. I'm here. I'll hold your hand. You just got to talk slowly. Thank you. Thank you, Kath. Yeah. So she was supposed to be adopted by uh, an, uh, a man who uh, he he passed all of the background check and the paperwork. And we were really excited because Pearl's one of our longer residents. And we know that ensuring that she gets adopted in a timely manner keeps her from becoming a supervillain as all of your 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 helpful forms and, and um, you know, instructional videos has helped us. So we were really excited when uh, Nemo came t- uh, to, to adopt a child. But as soon as, as Nemo um, was supposed to be here. Um, Don't we got to find Nemo? Yep. You do. I'm writing this down. Okay. <laughs> I would have, he, uh, he's never been late. He's always been on time. In fact, early for everything that we've ever had requirements for. And so it was so strange when he was not here the day of. And I was worried that something had happened. So I put in a missing person report with our great private investigator, Samuel. And he, uh, he confirmed today that he, he is missing. No one has seen him for a couple of days. Oh, well, Jeez. ma'am, it's been 72 hours and we have not found him. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Uh, so, unfortunately, I, 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 I must ask that you all, um, please, find, find Nemo. Mm. And do you uh, mind if I recorded all that? Oh, uh, uh, I already recorded it. Well, then, no, I guess. All right, you're on tape. Appreciate it. Well, well man, <laughs> it's, it's, it's times like this I have to remember my oath. I'm going to observe. What is happening? Uh, a, ch- a child's adoptee is missing. I'm going to acknowledge my feelings about that. I don't feel great about it. Uh, I'm going to talk it through, and that's what we've been doing. And uh, now, I'm going to. You know, they need it. Yeah. Yeah. It. Uh, I'm dying. Do we do we know where uh, Nemo was last seen? So, according to Samuel, Samuel said he's had several really hot leads that he's excited to get to after after dinner. That's disgusting. And he he one <laughs> is that he has identified that Nemo often hung out by the docks because he was a previous ship's captain. And the other thing I'm that. Yeah, and the other the other lead that he has, uh, of course, Nemo uh, is is the owner of a, of a trinket store over in the museum district. Hmm. Can we speak to Pearl? Yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah. Let me let yeah. me grab Pearl. It all starts. With They're me. organized by alphabetically and then by height. Right. Uh, let's see. Uh, what's her height? Do we know? <laughs> Pearl's <laughs> height. Stand height. She's in the four ten seven. Pearl, if you could yeah. step forth, Pearl. Hello, Pearl's kind of salute. Oh. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Pearl's clutching Kiss' hand very tightly, except for when she has to salute, which she doesn't know how to do, and she does a she's double salute. Double salute. I like that. Uh, what can I can I help you? Have you seen any uh, strange goings on around here? Well, standard reporter questions. You mind if I'm recording you? Uh, uh nothing. Recording nothing. now. As nothing. a parental guardian, I consent. Thank you very much. That oh. makes it so much easier yeah. to streamline. <laughs> <laughs> nothing out of nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, everything's been pretty normal. Have you met a man named Nemo? Did you ever speak with him? I, I did. I met him a, a couple of times. And how did that go? Well, I, I thought he would be a... I've always wanted a father. Me too. Me too. <laughs> you too? 
Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, wait. Well. Is everyone here? Orphans? Everyone... Yeah, no. I was, yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. I, well, of course. Yeah. yeah. Never made Magic it into an right, orphanage yes. myself, but yes, I grew up on the streets. No parentage. You weren't in an orphanage? No. I mean, they, they didn't take in my... They rejected my you? Did you reject your orphan application? I, Holy <laughs> shit. That That's happen? so sad. That's... <laughs> what... <laughs> but, do, no worries. Can we have a look no, at that application yeah. later? Take it, place my top hat on. Like, it's okay, though. I'm ready what for my you, performance. What did you put on that application, man? I, they I, let in most kids. I did. I only learned how to write after. Oh, it was just a blank paper. Another kid who was born illiterate. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> you hate to see it. Wow, that's so sad. Anyhow, Pearl. Um, <laughs> oh, right, the kid. Uh, these conversations you had with Nemo, I mean, what were you saying about those again? He he was very kind. Um, he asked me about, you know, some of my favorite things. Um, he he was, um, excuse me, uh, there's an alley cat. Let me just catch that. Move, yeah. move oh, that's adorable. I get it. Oh, uh, and he, he, uh, you know, he talked a lot about, I asked him what, what he likes doing, and he, he loves to fish. Sure. Like cool. boats. Cool. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah. That's rad as hell. I do I do enjoy good fish. Yeah. and, and uh, Like and, these. And I produce three herrings Jesus. from my pocket. <laughs> Put those away. They're part of my act, though. Everybody clap. That was great. That was great. Ta-da. I'm not clapping. You scared me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, would you like a fish? And as I toss the fish, the fish turns into a tiny plastic alligator. Uh, I have a question, <laughs> Gabe. Are you a uh, tabaxi right now? Yes. Okay, thank you. Good. I'm I like a seven foot been, tall tabaxi. I, I have a comment. That might have escaped people's awareness. Yes. <laughs> Gabe, I've got, because of your virtual background, when you do take your hat off, it looks like you're magic- magicking it in and out of existence. Which <laughs> I, mean, I feel pretty on brand. Like that? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's all part of the illusion. Uh, Can you describe uh, Nemo to us, Pearl? What does this man look like? He uh, he he has half a mustache Excuse and half me. and half a beard. The other half, you can see that he has uh, some sort of burn wounds. Oh. Whoa, 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 Pearl, Pearl, Pearl! And like, I do the thing where like I get like you know one knee get down on <laughs> our level, like get Pearl. I take <laughs> off my bag. Good. Like, this is an officer. Dan, this is an officer Rolando. This is Dan talking. <laughs> Has Nemo been, you know, ensorcelling anyone? Have you noticed Nemo chanting eldritch names of fell deities? No, not neither of those. Uh, he Nemo said he hmm. can't do magic. I asked because, of course, uh, Mistafel is my favorite magician. Okay, Pearl, oh, one more question. No. Have you ever set something on fire because it was fun? <laughs> Only recently. I, I, I okay. dip in and go, uh, but it, it was for an act. It's for, it's for part of the act. It was for an act. I've yes. burnt, it, is oh. it a bad sign to burn things? I've burnt so many stories that people have brought me because it's fun. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, that that's just freedom of expression. That's fine. Okay, make it short. Um, DM, I'm guessing my character would know, but this guy, he has half a mustache and half a beard. Yeah. Are they on opposite sides of the face or on the <laughs> same side of the face? They're, they're on opposite sides. There's opposite diagonal. Sides. Yeah, it goes How diagonal. How do you suffer that kind of burn damage? The other, you know, it's I never asked. It like felt like it would be. Yeah. It, well, perhaps if you were to help in this endeavor to find Nemo, <laughs> you could ask. I'm yeah, sorry, you're... man, but we don't make a habit of putting our children in danger. It's kind of the first, it's the num. It's, there's only one rule and it's mostly don't put children in danger. Oh, I would never put children in danger. I'd say as I like slowly drag like this giant metal spiky ball across the room, putting <laughs> it in a trunk, yeah. <laughs> just put that away before it explodes. Yeah, you push all the helium tanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They, they just like fall and clatter across the floor. One of them starts sputtering. I tighten yeah. it again. <clears throat> yes. Closer Quite. than so that we're, they're within 30 feet of the children at all times. Right. Yes. 
<laughs> I would never. Anyway, it sounds like you guys got the information you're looking for. You're going to have to talk to this private detective or... Or go to the docks. Go to the docks. Hmm. Check out his trinket shop. Sure. Oh. I think we should talk to the detective, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Seems like the most promising yeah. lead. Go hit a bowl, Sam. Yeah, so Samuel, you all are able to uh, ask yeah, for no other reason except for plot the magician and I leave too. <laughs> right. Wait, wait, wait. I have to I have to do my show really quick. Really quick. All oh, right. yeah, yeah. So, so, hand. A regular number two, Dixon Ticonderoga. <laughs> Behold. Whoa. This is it's like your hand's not there at all. Everybody clap. Everybody clap. That was good. But then, but then, <laughs> once more. <laughs> Ta-da! Oh, whoa, everybody clap. <laughs> Perfect. Well done. Well executed. Oh, yes, thank you. 2020. thank you. I am like sitting crisscross applesauce with the orphans watching and clapping. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's me, Fortune. Uh, I, know, I know already, of course, that Dan and uh, Smiles are resolving this for very different reasons, but I'm very grateful. Uh, Kith, since you're the most capable of any of us, if you could go with them so in order to help out. And Mistafel, they might run into dark magic, and you're the only magician I know. It would seem I, to really round out the party. I am, I, am, I am very accustomed to the dark magics. I'd like having you around. How accustomed. <laughs> It's for the children. We oh, shall do this. It's for the kids. It's for the kids. That's yes. Awesome. Dark Samuel, magic for the children. Yeah. Samuel said he was going to grab a meal, but he said he was going to do it at the docks uh, in order to be more timely. So oh, mm, wow. okay, I do need to good. restock yeah. on my herrings for that right. trick. No, we're not getting any more fish. Okay. I sailor moon change into my investigator clothes and we leave. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I sit and start producing all the little fish that I have hidden up my sleeves. Mm-hmm. Right. To the docks. I, I, yeah, I, I hand out little little packets to all the kids before I leave. They say stuff like necromancy and you. Yeah, and how they have a race. They how have to a talk to your kid about Fortnite. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I set up a tripod for like an old timey camera, and I take a, a photo of the kids, and like it has the bulb that explodes to oh, do it. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> they have to stand still for like twenty minutes. I say, don't move. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it, it is, uh, uh, because of the handing out the packets, the magic show and the picture at the end of it, when everyone's happy, um, it's, it's gotten later at night. There's the rain has become heavier. Um, there's one magical light that's flickering, but all the rest have gone out as you're walking towards the docks, the sewers in the city just aren't able to cope with the torrential 57 days of straight rain that this noir atmosphere has created. And the streets are starting to overflow a little bit with both water and mostly cigarette butts. Mm. Uh, you, uh, you are going closer to the, to the docks when first you're buffeted by uh, a pretty uh, strong wind that's blowing salt water and the faint smell of herring uh, from, the, from the, yeah, it's Ugh. everywhere, you, un- inescapable. And the uh, second thing you notice is that there's one establishment still with its lights on this late. It is, of course, the first stop in uh, the tavern mm. that is by the uh, docks where all the dock workers and et cetera go. You uh, approach the tavern. And uh, do, do you, what do you do? Yeah, I'm absolutely approaching this tavern. Yeah, kick open yeah. the door, order a glass of milk. Let's go. Let's do this. Perfect. Yeah, the door uh, b- bursts open to. Uh, it's not one of those situations like old old spaghetti westerns where people just stop because you come into the tavern, uh, which seems always very strange. Uh, so the like 15 people who are there expect there's going to be more people at some point, so they just continue what they're doing, <laughs> which is mostly cajoling. Uh, they are there are no cajoling uh, in here. <laughs> there are three or four gnomes that are just throwing darts at a dart board and uh there's a group of people in dark robes that are at a table they look like they're dicing with some sort of like dice card from bones uh it's very normal and then there's some people uh on the bar and then there's 
the bartender the bartender is polishing a um a leg of turkey just mm-hmm. making sure that it's clean mm-hmm. and uh with a dirty rag from turkey polishing Jeez. and uh there's I a would report on that activity but i only report good things <laughs> There's also a faint haze of smoke that fills the entire bar uh, as as all of this uh, cajoling is is going on. Can we see the private eye? Is he in here, or is he at the docks? Yeah, looking at the looking at the um, at the uh, bar, you you there's a everybody's dressed as dock workers except for one man. Uh, it's the man who you all saw earlier. Actually, you are uh, familiar with him. Uh, Kith, having worked at the orphanage and probably just been interviewed by him. Uh, he is a uh, half sloth, half man, sloth man uh, named Samuel. He's at the end and he just has a, he has a, the, just the saddest lettuce that you've ever seen. Uh, salad. <laughs> yeah. It just, this place is not a place you order salad at. And he made a cheap mistake. Is it just a head of lettuce? It is. It's mm-hmm. a, just a head of lettuce. It's been cut in half. So it's two uh, heads of nice lettuce. At least. But they put it down and they put little like uh, they put like whipped cream and a cherry on top. So it kind of looks like, <laughs> yeah, eyes. What does he look like? Is he sad about it? Yeah. Like, oh. like, 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 like big owl eyes. Yeah. He, well, he's, you, you think he might be sad about it because he kind of has his head down, but then you realize he's probably sleeping. No. Okay. Mm-hmm. I slam my glass of milk heavily on the table and I say, well, 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 Samuel, long time no see. <laughs> Oh, it's you. Hello, it's me kid. and my three acquaintances who have something to ask you. Oh, ha- yeah. hello. Let's ask him at the same time, gang. You right. have my consent to record. Right. They, yes, I'm recording you. <laughs> Let's ask him at the same time. All right. three, same time. Two, one. What's you your favorite tell favorite? us. <laughs> you tell us. Please do tell us. <laughs> yeah. There, there's only three more cans of oats in my house. I smack him across the face. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hand you a, uh, a, a, a large mouth bass to slap him with in the future. Oh. <laughs> Next time it's going to be this. <laughs> you were a slapstick mag- magician. I, oh, I kind of like pick up on what they're doing. Like good cop, bad, not a cop. So like, <laughs> like yeah, yeah, like oh, oh come on, guys. It's, 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 it's good cop, bad magician. <laughs> yes, yes. That's Don't give them the fish, boys. Uh, but I, 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 yes. they can't leave the fish inside. They get all slimy. Samuel, I tell them what they want to know, man. Why do you well, please ask me one question at a time? <laughs> Jesus Christ, amateur hour. <laughs> you need to tell me that you can't answer four questions at once. Some what? detective you are. We're looking for this guy called Nemo. You've been on the case for, I don't know, two days now? Right, yes. Yeah. He's got a mustache on one side of his face, a beard on the other? Yeah. Yes. That- that's yes, of confirm. And how'd you come to confirm that he's actually gone missing? Oh, because he comes to this bar every day and stopped coming for the first every time day. in twenty years three days ago. Samuel, is do you mean to tell me that this is how you conduct your business? You go into a bar and whoever's not there the next day is missing. <laughs> <laughs> It's led to many open cases that will be solved. Well, no kidding, Samuel. Do you have any information that you're not telling us? No, that's all of the information I have. I would like this. The bartender (laughs) slaps the leg of turkey on the table. (laughs) It's sparkling clean. And, oh, and it's, yeah, it leaves no. It leaves no turkey legs rest. good, not clean enough to eat off of. <laughs> it actually cleans the table a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, "Are you all looking for That's Nemo?" Oh That's yeah, right. yeah, that guy. Yeah, tell us what you know. He's been a patron. That <laughs> one of the cats got in. It's getting the rat yeah, the back. Oh. Nemo has been a patron of this bar for 30 years. I pick up the cat and place it inside my top hat. <laughs> it vanishes. 30 years. 30 years. And what he stopped he... coming 
three days ago at Jeez. this exact moment. I said, what do you Mark, normally second. order? He has walked in. He orders one cup of pear extract. Freak. And three mints. What? It's actually a delicacy on the soy coast. Okay, I don't want to judge. I took a cruise. <laughs> It is. He's right. Well, he, so he's when not he, here. Do you have any idea where he could be? Yeah. You know, Mimo, I'm recording you as well, by the way. Just sorry to, you've been recorded. Well, I was going to say something potentially incriminating, so I won't say that now. Thank you. Oh, God <laughs> damn it. And, uh, damn you, disclosure laws. <laughs> I, I'm not recording. <laughs> Nemo. He was a ship's captain his whole career. He only retired a few years ago, a handful of years. And he retired so that he could start his trinkets store over in the museum district. Hmm. The museum district? Yeah, I think we got to go to the museum district. When, when he, when he um, went missing three days ago, was there any suspicious things that happened around that time? You know, there was, there was nothing out of the ordinary except... What? No, it probably wasn't anything. You what must was it? tell us. Oh, well, the day Nemo went missing, well, the day before, there was a man in here asking yes. after Nemo. I take the turkey leg and I slap him across his face and I say, you tell us what he said. He was telling us. <laughs> Cut to the chase. He leaves his face just, just Every perfectly game clean. Ever. It looks, it looks <laughs> yeah. Now he has half his face is dirty. From a hard day's work, and his other half of his face is just sparkling. I did you a favor. <laughs> you need to exfoliate, buddy. You know, <laughs> what do you think I was cleaning that turkey leg for? <laughs> this man came in asking about Nemo. He said he used to be his first mate. I believed him because he said his name was the <laughs> name of Nemo's first mate. What was the name? But he said his name is the name of Nemo's first mate. Insight check. <laughs> oh, that is. <laughs> roll, roll, roll a d20. This is how long. This might be the longest we've gone without me making someone roll a d20. Jeez, oh, geez. <laughs> Almost 45 minutes. Yeah, roll an insight check. <laughs> okay, I rolled a nine plus five is 14. Uh, you feel like he's, he's telling the truth. Uh, everything he said, he feels is truthful. Dismissed. Can I roll slide of hand <laughs> to... You can leave uh, your own bar now. <laughs> a slide of we'll hand take to, over. to, to uh, swap the turkey leg uh, for a, another fish. Yeah, roll a d20. <laughs> you just want the presentation turkey leg. I do. Um, I'll come out to a 17. Uh, yeah, you. I mean, you get... Uh, it's a turkey fish. It's a really yeah. rare type of bird fish. It's a flying. It's a flying fish breed. Perfect. Yeah, I've caught one of those in Animal Crossing before. Yeah. So uh, they're worth many a bell. Uh, so you are. <laughs> you you have a. Uh, so yes, I, I. That man came in. He was wearing a hat that had three feathers in it, mm. and also nothing else. What color were the feathers go? Hey, he was just just the hat. Is he naked <laughs> besides the hat? Well, the hat the hat came down into a robe, but it was connected. Okay. So okay. like a like a hood. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it was a hood. It was a hood with three feathers in it. Yeah, we'd call that a hood. Huh. <laughs> feathered right. feathered hood. Yes. I've not seen a feathered hood before. This is intriguing. I may need to incorporate this into my next act. Mm -hmm. Do you know where he went after he came in? He came and he said, hello, my name is Nemo's first mate. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. So I need to find Nemo. And I said, well, you're going to have to give me more than that for me to tell you where Nemo is, which uh -huh. he mistook. I wanted money. But instead, he mm. looked at me in the eye and he slapped me with my with my turkey leg and I and said tell me what I need to know just like you did and why I told him exactly like I'm telling you and I said Nemo owns a trinket store over in the, the library district. Well, you probably went to that trinket store. 
All right. Oh, yeah, we need Star Swipe. <laughs> to the <laughs> trinket store. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so you uh, you begin to walk. Let's see. Uh, do I have a virtual background for? Let's do this one. So you begin Ooh, to yeah. uh, walk over to the the trinket store, and mm. you're in the museum district. At this point, the the night has become kind of a torrential downpour. Um, there is um, a, a little dark alley off of the main road, which you're following. Kind of some rough drawn. Uh, directions by I never gave a name to this man who's running the uh, who's running Chuck. the bar that we were talking about. But if somebody wants to in chat, uh, oh, okay. uh, give me a name. And, <laughs> yeah, so I'll let you guys know when that comes through. Or actually, so, so let That's us know when that comes. Know. You get to pick the best name, Phil. So um, you you all are are making your way, and uh, you find you find this little offshoot alley. And there is my cat is trying to make noise. Give me one second. <laughs> my cat is actively making noise. <laughs> the entire time. My so cat is the most this, behaved cat this, of the stream. This town is infested with cats. Um, so my you, cat is a snake and doesn't make noise. <laughs> metal. <laughs> you uh, you all you all find this little side alley, and you're going down that uh, because of the the directions that were given to you by the uh, bartender and down the alley there is a small store it's called one man's jump and it <laughs> is right where you would see the, this is supposed to be pg-13 and you're making it really hard it's one <laughs> it's a store a trinket store it's called one man's junk and yeah. it's implied that it's another man's treasure okay hey, i thought this was I, PG-13. we have a name yeah Ooh, we have a name what's that ronaldo name? the magnificent ronaldo uh, yeah. Magnificent. Is there already Ronaldo? No, Rolando. Yeah, Rolando. Rolando and Ronaldo. <laughs> so Ronaldo is the owner of the bar, and he gave you, he drew, drew you this map, and you you followed it, and you come to One Man's Junk. It's a shop in a dark alley off a little main road. Uh, from your vantage point, it's got One Man's Junk in giant golden letters, and some of those letters are like substituted with things that you'd find at a trinket store, like. Um, cute. The J is like, it's a spyglass, but then they kind of curve it at the end so it looks useless, but it had to become a J, so things like that. Um, and mm-hmm. then there is, uh, it's across a big open window. The window inside you can see is dark, but you can see it's filled with all sorts of things. And then there's a tiny door to the side uh, that is closed. How small is this door? It's not that way. Well, it's uh, it's small compared to the window, but it's very normal sized door. <laughs> you, a human sized door. Human like, walking up door? to it, you sure. notice that while the door is closed, the wood that would be uh, where the deadbolt's lock would go is completely busted away, uh, and it looks like uh, somebody might have um, busted it recently. Jesus, I need to get a picture of this. I start setting up. <laughs> I'm like I'm like down on the ground posing next to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. Stay there. Yeah. I'll set. I'll set and do and do the small, pictures without people in small them. Small sparkles <laughs> around. I your like head. this because we can use these. I wouldn't be able to use just a broken door for the paper. We need something happy in it. <laughs> I'm all about throwing something happy into the mix. <laughs> I appreciate that. Can I use my eye for detail uh, feature as part of my subclass to yes. make an investigation check for clues? Yes. Cool. Thanks. Ooh. Okay. Cool. Uh, twenty-three. Uh, yeah. You've noticed that there's wood uh, on the on the ground that is wet uh, because it was uh, it was since it's on the ground you can tell it was pulled away from the door. So it's either somebody inside busted out using a lot of force, or somebody on the outside used a crowbar. And with the twenty-three, you can safely assume you can see where the crowbar came like was forced in and used to bust away the wood. You also are able to evaluate the wood in the rain and you can tell that because of the, with the 23, the water saturation, it's exactly a, a t- 46 hours of rain saturation. Uh, you've done a lot of rain saturation tests in your time. Yes. Um, and we're, so, we're in the city where it always rains. So yes, it, it always. So always. You, uh, <laughs> you know, all of those things. This looks like 46 hours worth of rain. Oh, Someone is open the outside. Did you say 4D6? That's, um... 4D6, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to look around the trinket shop. Yeah. Um, does, the, does the door seem ajar? No, I mean, it's cl- but it easily opens because the whole locking mechanism has been busted away. But and it's not like open- visibly broken into. 
Yes. Yeah. Okay. And okay. as you open it, uh, the, the door bell, like train, it does a little ding, ding, ding. And you walk inside uh, here actually real quick as the uh, sound guy for the quid pro roll podcast, Mr. Fell, if you could give us a door jingling sound. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> sort of walk- like a, a cash register. <laughs> Uh, you all walk inside and uh, you see a, to your right, there is kind of a, um, in front of the window is where a lot of like smaller trinkets and jewelry and things like that are stored. Uh, none of them seem to have been touched. They all seem to be exactly in their spot. Uh, there's some clothing on the side. It looks super trendy. Uh, it says things like goblins and growlers. <laughs> <laughs> overall. Shameless uh, plug. On right. The and, one. <laughs> you could probably find it at... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Bill, if you want to drop that link in the in the thing. I um, oh, and there's a code. You should give people the code so they get free shipping. So Not only is oh, it available in Zorkis, call. it's available in real life at the code following in the Twitch chat. Yeah, it looks, it's, so it's super trendy clothes, uh, but it's, somehow they seem untouched, which you think is it's super strange. Uh, yeah. And then the other thing is that- Just one man's joke. So. Yeah. The, the other thing is that uh, to your left, you can see like the a, a nice- um, it, a reclaimed um, desk that uh, from from some sort of like shipwrecked wood, and it's been perfectly like restored and sanded. And there's a cash register uh, there, and uh, I go to the cash register. I'm like, how much money do they make? Yeah, you open it up, and uh, uh, Gabe, could you give me a sound? Uh, Thank you. Ooh. That was different. That was very different. That was very fast. <laughs> we'll go back and we'll we'll do an A-B test after. Yeah. yeah. So you, you open that cash register up and there is inside of it um, 64 oh. pieces of uh, gold. Chump change. I shut it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very good. Does it look disturbed in here? So, like, has there been so a- someone broke in? But they didn't steal the money out of the register. In fact, does anything no. look taken? No. Hmm. Damn. No scuffle in here either. Any stairs? Secret doors? <gasps> there is stairs. In the back corner, you notice that where you uh, where you would expect them to be, there is kind of like a roped mm. off area that leads to a stairway up top. Because of where this is uh, situated, this shop, you know that most of these shops have their residential living over the top of them. And walking up those stairs, you come to a small hallway, and it has uh, three rooms going off of it. Um, One on your left, one on your right, and one right in front of you. Wow. I think think you three should split split up and search the rooms. Okay. Hell yeah. Uh, I will take the room on the left. I will yeah. take the room on the right. Yeah. And I flourish with my mage hand to open up the door. I flourish um, with my normal hand to open up the door. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I noisily march forward to the front door. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gabe, if you give me three different door opening noises. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, my door is made out of cedar. Salon. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Yes, that helps. So, so the first one. <laughs> yeah, second that one. one. <laughs> that one was mine. Yeah, and the that last one. How's <laughs> <laughs> that? They really need some WD forty in this world. <laughs> <laughs> this is a problem. I mean, all the all, just forty eight hours of uh, brain saturation. Right. right. So mm. uh, on the door to the left, um, <laughs> I'm going to say Kith is seeing all these rooms. Kith is. Uh, I was actually hoping to scope out the bottom level for something interesting. Mm. Oh. There's a lot of junk in here. Maybe there's um, you know, something I could use. Like a table. <laughs> Um, Keith, yeah. if you could, if you could uh, either either be more specific or just roll me a straight d20. I want you to be as crazy bananas as you possibly can be, Alon. If it's okay. a spaghetti whisk, then that's what I want it to be. Um, it's a noodle. A noodle. Okay, <laughs> so that's a 17. A 17. Uh, that'll get you better than a noodle and better than a pool a noodle. A pool noodle? Oh. <laughs> 
Is it a pool noodle that's outfitted to work as a didgeridoo? No. (laughs) So I have some more time. Uh, So, uh, um, Mistafel, you open a door, and in in that room that you open to, you see a uh, there's a bed that looks like it's kind of nautical. It's like built into the wall. There's pictures of nautical scenes everywhere, and there's a chest uh, that uh, looks. It has. uh, N- Nemo's name kind of carved into it, and there's also a dresser that has like a a, a mirror, etc., like a wash basin. Hmm. Interesting. I think somebody lived here. <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> I wonder who who would have lived in a place like this? So many nautical <laughs> themes. And there's a bed. Perhaps this Nemo traveled in his bed. Best man for the job right there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, across the hall, um, Dan, you've opened up. No, please don't attack my foot. So, <laughs> Dan, don't oh, attack sorry, my foot. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, you open up this other door and you find a, a room. There is um a bed that is inside of a, a of a tiny carved ship. It looks really cool. Uh-huh. And there's a chest also in front of this bed. It's open and it's overflowing with children's toys. And there is um, a banner that's going across it that says, welcome to your home. And uh, there's, yeah. Um, I just want to, I just want to uh, state that it is so valid for men to cry. <laughs> And, and Dan, Dan's looking around at this and have himself a good, healthy, little misty eye cry. It's, um, it's like misty step. It's also a... It's a <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I can't misty cry. Myself. I just take my emotions and I transform them 30 feet this way. <laughs> uh, uh, so so with, with that, uh, Mr. Fell sort of almost like slides into the room, just <laughs> a friend, and starts pulling out just... Handkerchief after handkerchief after handkerchief after handkerchief. This is no, so good. No, I'm, I'm good. Okay, no, I'm, I'm I, okay. Are you sure? Because I, I, I have, yeah. I have more. I have more. Okay, I, have, I have so much more. I, I can, I can keep going for days. I guess you could say I appreciate the lengths to which you're willing to go to be a supportive friend right now. <laughs> um, you did say we were friends. I, I don't have many of those. Right. Um, after recentering my uh, emotional axis, um, I'm going to uh, stop, collaborate, and listen. Um, I'm going to look around this room. Is there anything like out of the ordinary, like something that doesn't make sense to be in what is clearly like a children's room? Like yeah, you, you uh, <laughs> roll me, roll me the switchblade investigation. Oh, baby, I'll roll you investigation check. Right. Yeah. While you're looking around that room. Uh, Kith. Yes, I found a teddy bear. Um, your your trinket searching, and one catches your eye. It catches your eye because a full moon reflects through the window and reflects off of it into your eye, momentarily blinding you. And then you kind of like, yeah, you kind of <laughs> shield it. You look, and you can see that there's a little glass circle. You approach it, and it is a compass, but it is not pointing north. The arrow is just kind of like running around. Uh, in inside of it, and you can see on the back of it, it says, uh, "Oh, Captain, my Captain, may you find your way home." <laughs> okay. okay, okay. This was for things. But, okay. but when you look at it, the reason why it caught the sun was because you thought it was put out with the other things inside the glass case, but it was sitting on top of the glass case, and it has fingerprints on it. Okay. Nothing great, else cool. in the case do. Hyper inquisitive subclass zoom. I for detail investigation enhance. clues. <laughs> Could you enhance a few times? Yeah, enhance. Yeah, thank you. Uh, wh- uh, you're uh, you. What are you looking for? Uh, these are fingerprints. Are they human sized fingerprints? Possibly made by someone with a mustache on one side of his face and a beard on the other. <laughs> Man, you we know, cannot give medieval cultures <laughs> enough credit. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna say roll high. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah. Roll oh, a 70. That's a, that's a six. 
You can tell they are definitely fingerprints. Uh, and because they don't have any fur, you know that whoever was touching it didn't have furry hands. Got it. Hey. All right. What do you mean, hey? Right. No, that's fair. That's fair. The tabaxi is off the list of suspected murderers. You pull out a list of just 3,000 people and you just... <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Hopefully Mr. Fell was already crossed off. What What did you get, Dan? Ooh, you uh, <laughs> so tell me what you know about that three. Oh yeah, so you're you go and you're. That's with my plus two to investigation. I rolled a one. Right. Oh, you rolled a one. <laughs> yeah, you go to the chest. You open up the chest. You're like, there has to be something that's not right here. And you're looking through. You're you're, and you realize that there is a um, there is a uh, a puzzle that has rings on it. Right, they stack up. They're different. They're different sizes as they go towards the top. But there's still just a little bit of room at the top, and there there's probably a ring that must go there. But there isn't. I, uh, okay, I'm already like I'm like I'm like out the door. I'm like, guys, we gotta find a ring. There's a missing ring. It all it all comes back to the ring. I've got a cigarette in my hand. I look like I haven't slept. <laughs> it's all about the ring. I knew it. You guys really need to stop smoking indoors. It's totally against code. <laughs> it's, uh, it's so a few uh, a few meters away. Um, smiles, you've opened the door into a study. Uh, you know it's a study because there's a desk in the middle with a kind of a drafting table. There's um, lots of miniatures, some painted, some unpainted. Uh, plenty of groups who've presented this weekend would be able to tell you how to paint those if you check them out in the mini section on uh, Storm Giant Games. Uh, the, the, there's uh, map making tools, etc. And amidst it all, one of the most key reasons why you can tell it's a study is there's paper strewn everywhere. Some of them look important, some of them look not important, but they're strewn everywhere. They're all over the room. It's like a map making room, you, you're saying? Yeah, yeah, it's um, it's mostly for draft map making. Yeah, mm. I say I've always wanted to make a map, so I start uh, sketching out <laughs> the city. <laughs> yeah, uh, do you do you just do you grab blank paper or do you grab some of the paper that's just kind of loose leafed around? Oh yeah, I'll take like a finished map and I'll start f- uh, flourishing it up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, if you could roll me roll me just a straight d twenty, it's just a. Okay. 16. Yeah, you 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 draw like uh tell me how you make this map flourished. Right. Yeah, I'm just kind of thickening all the lines <laughs> so it becomes oh a little uh bolder and easier to see. Okay. Yeah. You're like my my readers, my magazine, many of them are over 60 and they would never be able to Exactly. Yeah. Including um, myself, I'm 65 as years old. As you're doing that, uh Ms. Felt sort of wanders into that room looking for wherever that cat noise is coming from um and goes interesting yeah what do you this person think of this? made maps and yet they found themselves lost hmm. oh man that's the title of the movie yeah dan leans out of the door he's like you know that's <laughs> metaphorical as hell <laughs> also men can cry <laughs> men can cry <laughs> I'm like wiping tears away as I'm looking at this map. <laughs> <laughs> With the map. No, that that that's that that ink that you're using is map. very toxic. That that that'll hurt your eyes. You shouldn't use that. <laughs> I've I've Thank used you. that in many, many routines. Uh most humans it, they shouldn't just be near that ink. It's very bad for you. Thank you. Thank you. Um Alan, uh, can I look around the room for like um I don't know anything amiss. <laughs> <Is that okay? laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, roll me, roll me an investigation check. Oh no! How do I do that? <laughs> roll a d twenty. You're just looking for investigation. Okay. Rolling d. Roll a one. You're getting in on this ring theory. I yeah. got a seven. Baby. <laughs> I'm in on the ring theory. I got a seven. Uh, yeah, you you can tell that there's papers that are thrown everywhere. Uh, <laughs> I can tell that. <laughs> you can tell, and it it doesn't seem like that's a natural state of this room. It seems this like is... that was. Uh, you can also see that there's like um, the the dresser uh, has been tipped over, which you like, didn't notice when you were coming in. But now that you look around, you're Whoa. like that does look at an angle. Like you thought it was kind of a leaning tower of Pisa riff. I thought this was a style choice at first. <laughs> right. 
uh, and and uh, yeah, and then the also the desk itself uh, on the other side of the desk where you would work from, all the drawers are like thrown open. Jeez, somebody left in a hurry, or fought somebody. Mm. I'm gonna look at this map. Does this map tell me anything that I was working on? <laughs> Roll a d20. Now that that map is. You can roll out advantage since you've been studying the map for a while, and also because the lines are bolder and thicker, you can see it better. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I rolled I an eight. You trace the whole thing. Yeah, so roll 2d20, take the highest. Oh, okay. Eight, and then one. <laughs> so eight. Yeah, you... Uh, you uh, Places his finger on the map and then tries to tr- tries to zoom it in by spreading it out. <laughs> yeah, you, you look at that map trying to figure out if there's anything on it that's like out of place. Mm-hmm. Or, or that would give you a, a hint, and you realize that the map that you've been sketching over, it, in you thought it was this city, it's not this city. Oh my God! Is there a name on the on the map? Yeah, at the top of the map, it says uh, it says uh, um, map Mapolis. Mapolis. I thought you were going to call it so Red Herring, but Mapolis is a better is a better name. Maps. Heard well, so much about the, this. That's just the name of the place. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I found a map for the lost city of Mapolis. Well, we must go there at once. But before we do that. <laughs> oh, right. The kid. Find this person. Oh. Before we find the city. <laughs> I, also, I also, if anyone needs, I have the red herring here. Oh. <laughs> uh. Um, DM, we didn't see any blood in any of these rooms, right? No, no blood that you well, didn't get. It just looks like the this. one room that's been impacted is the study. Yes. Well, I, I would I would also like to roll investigation within the uh, the 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 Nemo room, the Nemo bedroom, the master boudoir. Yeah, roll me roll me an investigation check. The one where I'm I'm guessing someone probably slept in. Ooh, that's a nineteen. Uh, so, Ooh, that's better than a ten. <laughs> no, <I really laughs> said that. Despite all odds, uh, so I'm going to I'm going to roll against you. You're going to find one of two things, depending on what I roll. All right, so stay high or low. Uh, carefully. Low. You find a ring. Oh no! You find a ring. it is a signet ring. Oh. oh, holy it guacamole. It fits perfectly on top of that toy. <gasps> okay, we're back in it. Which I've been carrying around. and like, like of emotion. Guys, right. guys, yes. yes. This is a ring. This is my insecurity. This... <laughs> <laughs> you set that ring on top, it fits perfectly. You look at the signet. The signet is half a beard and half of a mustache. <laughs> <laughs> and, it's his tinkerer's seal. And then below the mustache side, it says uh, N. Above the beard, beard side, it says R. N. What could it possibly mean? Uh, uh, yeah, letter the letter N, and then the letter R. N R. I gave this guy a full name. You know his full name is Nemo Rion. Got it. <laughs> cool. Great. Good. Perfect. I'm not going to overthink it anymore. Wait. I have an idea. Oh, God. <laughs> How does he do that? Where did that come from? He's good. What if this was Nemo's ring? Hmm. You know, I think you're onto something there. Yeah. What if... What if someone wanted Nemo's ring? Like us. Wanting it right now, but not us. Hmm. Does the toy change at all? <laughs> when you put that ring <laughs> on the I rolled a 20. So when you put that ring on that toy. I'm so smug I'm just so happy this all panned out for me. Right. It, it fits into the on the toy perfectly and then it rotates and it locks in. It makes a clicking noise. And as it does the elder gods Sorry. The bottom of the toy slides open, 
and you see a magnifying glass that has a lemon emblazoned in gold on the handle. Oh, I got to get lemon juice on the map. (laughs) 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 I scramble to find a lemon. Okay. Roll a d20 investigation. Okay. (laughs) Right in lemon juice, not squeeze it on top of it. Oh, that's fine. uh, I'll be right back. I'm going to go watch National Treasure. I rolled a three. You know that most people who've ever been on the on the ocean carry around citric fruits in abundance because they don't want scurvy. They've seen that shit. And they don't. They, they watch don't, the nature documentary. Yeah, they don't mess with that. But yeah. you, you're just having trouble finding some. Maybe he took all of his citric fruits when he was uh, left or abducted or whatever happened. Damn. Okay. So, I guess I'll put this on the back burner. <laughs> no, that's the trick. Put it on the back burner to heat it up. Throw it in a fire. <laughs> <laughs> Light your cigarette with it. Um, yes. Is the wardrobe in the master bedroom, has anyone checked that? Is it still full of his clothes? Yes. It doesn't look like he's taken anything out to pack away? No. Okay. And there's a suitcase in there. Is it open or closed? It oh, it's just in the corner. It's kind of dusty. Is it a Gladstone? It's a Gladstone. Yeah. We're not, we're not sponsored, but it is a Gladstone. Nice. nice. I mean, I believe... I believe uh, I don't want to call you Rakshasa. Damn it. <laughs> Baxi? What? No, what's your name? Mistafel. Mistafel? Okay, I believe Mistafel uh, has already searched this room, and we've done as much as we could in the study, correct? Yeah, you feel confident. Well, I'm, I think you could do more in the study. <laughs> okay, <laughs> what? let's give it, let's give it an eye for detail, just to, just to ah, make sure that, that you know. <laughs> right. There's, I mean, you can complete this adventure without doing more in the study, but no, no, no. Let's go. Let's go in there. Uh, I don't see the going, point. I already recorded uh, the let's, audio let's in bring here. The, um, let's bring the magnifying glass because maybe that'll be useful. Hmm. Going in, into the is, study. Like, get in the study. I just want to like turn around and say, someone in this room is a murderer because you're oh. all killing it. Let's keep up the good work. <laughs> Oh, you do flatter me so. I'm going to uh, take him off my suspect list for making that terrible joke. <laughs> no murderer would ever make that joke. But <laughs> positive reinforcement. Yep. Teamwork <laughs> makes dream work. And uh, with that, I will uh, uh, take the, the, the light bulb from the top of my head and cast light on it so that it glows. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now that it's not on your head. Yeah. And it's like, ooh, yeah. actual magic. You're ooh. holding, you're holding <laughs> a light bulb and it's glowing. Most people think you just invented electricity, like just the static electricity from you rubbing your, your tabaxi feet on the carpet and yeah. you this light bulb. You're in the uh, you're in the study. You have a magnifying yes. glass. I would like to look and for light. clues, but also anything that resembles this like little lemon insignia that I saw. Yeah, you see an exact copy of the lemon insignia Sweet. at the top no left the corner of Map Map Mapolis. Map 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 up Yes. Uh okay. the is map up You map uh, up You you uh go to the map of Mapolis and using the magnifying glass, you're able yeah. to see it's not a map of Mapolis. Someone <laughs> wrote with oh. lemon juice on this map <laughs> and they actually drew another map. Oh my goodness. I hang it up to a light source, probably the Edison who just invented. Yes. I, ha- yes. I hang it up against his light source. How old, how old are you, Kip? Uh, uh, a very no, young 120. Point. Okay. <laughs> since you're above the age of 60. It's hard. To, the lines are very narrow. Somebody has not really <laughs> optimized this map. <laughs> I it could but, sure use some boldening. Yeah. But you are able to eventually put together. This is a map of, the city and you see that there is uh an x on the map um I don't know how i missed that no oh, how ominous it's yeah it it, it, it b- beside it it says ominous x <laughs> uh, which you know to be one of the three ingredients of the of the uh strong the girls no they, they're the uh they're the the strong the strong uh uh smoke girls oh and, yes uh, <laughs> For alliteration, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, um, you, uh, 
strong it's, smoke sallies. It's next. To, <laughs> it's next to. Uh, there's these long piers by mm-hmm. the docks that are sometimes used for like um, nefarious onloading and offloading, so that you don't have to go through the docks, which is something that you know as a as a person who's a private investigator sort of uh, folk. And mm-hmm. you, yeah. So you, yeah. Um, you see that it's by the piers. Hey guys, not- hey gang, gang. Remember how we wanted to go to the docks the first time around? Yeah, I remember that. Guess yeah. where yeah. we're going now. Star swipe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's, let's I try, try to like hold, hold on to like the, 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 the no! wall. Oh, guess. Oh, like, no, no, no. <laughs> <Just guess. laughs> Before you know it, you're back to the, the piers and the docks. And it's, Beautiful. And, it's du- and it's dusk again. <laughs> yeah, until it isn't. It's raining. It's Oh, it's no. Ah! <laughs> There is not a giant um, uh, beast, but uh, you feel like the ominous presence, like there could be one at any given point in time. Mm. You, you are, uh, you're, you're approaching the docks. The, the downpour has become torrential. You're kind of having, and you're being just buffeted not only by that salt uh, watery smell, but now by actual salt water as huge waves are crashing into these piers and spraying salt everywhere. I'm trying to pepper the water. <laughs> Yeah, pepper grinder. Yeah, hey, magician. Do you think you could invent umbrellas next if you're taking requests? Um, he's a he's a magician, not an inventor. <laughs> <laughs> as you as you say this, I'll actually spend uh, one of my one of my spell spots to ca- cast um, shape water, and I'm going to yeah. start shaping the water as it's falling into like a disc. Yeah, above this us. gives me an idea for a movie. <laughs> 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 Look. If you look above you, the water has a shape. You, uh, you have invented uh, the shape of water umbrellas. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you, you make it to the docks. You're, um, you're at one. In, it's called the third pier. And it goes out. You can see that there's one to your right and a couple to your left. And they all kind of go out into the ocean. Um, the one that you're on, it seems like uh, it's it's right next to the X that you saw on the map, and it seems like nothing. A dead end. Another lead snuff like a cigarette on concrete. Uh, until you hear the sounds of a wooden box crashing up against the side of the pier loud. Like a rhythmic crashing like it's in the water? Yes, and it's crashing with the metronome of the waves. Ooh. I'm going to try to pick it up. Oh, yeah, water. big strong guys. Go go get wet. <laughs> I'm you, 65 years old. I'm going to need help. <laughs> <laughs> You're yeah, 65? You, 65. Yeah. Like, we'll do one of those things where, like, I hold onto his belt and, like, lower him over the edge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't going to work. You're going to have to hold my feet. Oh, yeah. You got this, Miles. <laughs> wait, wait. Uh, how, how, how deep is the water where they're going? <laughs> uh, it's probably pretty deep because the the piers are a good ways out once they find the box. Um, but right now uh, you can see that Dan is laying down on the side of the pier. His whole half of his torso is off and he's holding. Somebody yeah, grab Dan's great. feet. Doing great. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> grab Dan's feet. I'm, I'm not terribly uh, strong. Okay, I'll, I'll grab Dan's feet. This is the <laughs> okay, perfect. And, I do. Um, I, I do step forward and, and, and like unsheath my claws. And I, I, I could climb on the wood. Right. That would help. Grabbing Dan's feet is a, is actually a really high tier on his Patreon. And uh, <laughs> so, uh, right, Kith, you're holding on to Dan's feet. Dan, you're holding on to the feet of Smiles. Smiles, you're just barely able to reach this box. You kind of put your hands around it. It's larger. And uh, roll me a d20. Yes. Add your add your strength to it. Add my strength to it with advantage. Yeah. Your strength because uh, there's two people friendship. technically yeah, with assisting. advantage because of teamwork making the dream work. Yeah. Okay, that would be seventeen. <laughs> with perfect, added. you grab that box and you feel sixty four years young as you like are oh. holding on to it, and then everybody <laughs> else you're holds, younger. Holds you <laughs> and. Uh, you you make it to the top. You have this box. Uh, it says um, it says uh, it, it's got a stamp on it that says Pure One. Pure One. Pure Pure One. Oh, okay. oh my God. <laughs> not sponsored. Not. Wait, not sponsored. Which, which pier are we on? Three, I think. 
Yeah. Oh, is it locked? Uh, the box. The box is closed. Yeah. Is it I, closed? Like, I like run a finger along the top of it, and I like still wet. Can you taste if it's locked? So salty. You can taste that it's both wet, wet and locked. Oh yeah. my god. Uh, is, is there? It's locked. Is there like a, like a padlock or something on it? Uh, no, it's nailed shut. Ooh. Oh, does anyone know how well, to pick that's nails? That's something a lock for. <laughs> <laughs> you know who get get into this is that guy who had the crowbar who got into the junk shop in the first place. Alana, are, are there any toolboxes around or anything like that? <laughs> There's a box floating in the sea as well. Just roll me, roll me a d20. Just straight. This is a lock roll. Seven. <laughs> You uh, you notice there is a toolbox that somebody has yes. left, left out. <laughs> when you open it up, though, the only thing inside of the toolbox oh, no. is, um, is uh, three wrenches. I just toss them out to the gang. <laughs> All right, yeah, well, fantastic. You know, it seems for my really the first time. Our in our plans. <laughs> <laughs> a monkey crowbar, yes. Mm. If teamwork worked the first time, then it's going to work the second time. Gosh darn it. So I'm going to take a monkey wrench. Two other people going to take a monkey wrench? Yeah, I'm going to do that. that. Well, I already threw it, so it's got to be not me. (laughs) (laughs) And my axe. (laughs) My wrench. Yeah, so you three wield your wrenches and start just beating on this thing. Like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm guess uh, all three of you roll me a strength, just a strength. Woo! I have a negative one on that. <clears throat> Man. <sighs> yeah, seven. Eleven. What would you, you know about that eight, though? <laughs> Boxes are really good at being like wedged or pried open but beaten <laughs> beaten open they just they, it was just withstanding the storm hanging against this dock and you are this pier so it, you guys just don't seem to get too far you dent in some of the wetter wood but then once you get to that dry wood oh no chance um i i, I say gang it's time we use diplomacy and i draw my sword <laughs> there's diplomacy across it i'm gonna smite the box yeah oh. yeah yeah wait smite like your foundation or smite like Oh, smite! Like I'm a paladin. Smite. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 like just like, wedge that sword in there. Give it a couple of smites, and it'll open right up. Yeah, yeah. 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 Roll it to hit roll. Yeah. yeah, it's a box, so you can have advantage if you need it. <laughs> like, okay, it I do. Um, how's that? How's that? Uh. 11 feel oh yeah that's easily beating the boxes armor class that i set at an arbitrary four so (laughs) you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna take your sword and uh what was the diplomacy diplomacy you take diplomacy and you diplomatically cut this box in half oh wow you don't cut the contents you just okay good i do like that anime thing where like yeah you don't even it doesn't even look like (laughs) your sword i think you just go i think you just go (laughs) and it slides into half but all the contents are just still there in a box shape yeah (laughs) good good you didn't even roll that high i just gave that to you i feel like i I appreciate it a lot it felt right uh yeah it felt right (laughs) diplomacy worked this is yes i think uh it's gabe you're you're just phasing out of existence now or or you're a tree (laughs) it's turned into a tree (laughs) <laughs> um, so, uh, what are the contents of have? Yeah, you notice that the top of the box, the contents are mostly um, plates and uh, some like dishware. Uh, there's some nice mats. Um, there's kind of some mm-hmm. cushions that look to be like they kind of go through a variety of different pastels. Um, yeah, but then once you start getting underneath those, you realize there's a bunch of trinkets. <gasps> trinkets. Done. Trinkets. Yeah. What and kind of trinkets? It is in the trinkets. trinkets that you look across the way and you notice that there are some there's a light at the end of Pier One. There's a huge storm. Nobody should be out here. Can we tell what the light is coming from at all? Or is it just a light? Is it like a lantern, magical light, lighthouse? Sorry, say it. Is it like a lantern, magical light, lighthouse? 
Uh, it's not a lighthouse. It is either a lantern or a magical light, and you're not sure which, um, but it's like a pinprick among the darkness. In the words of my father before he died and left me orphan, son, go towards the light. Let's do this. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, I'm going to go stealthily. I will go behind the rest of the party. <laughs> <laughs> Approaching Pier One, you uh, you begin to Arch. you begin to walk down the soaked boards of the pier. You can hear over the gale force winds that there's a little bit of noise from people that seem to be loading something heavy Ooh. down off the pier. You see a few men at the end of the pier, and there's a lantern or a magic. It's actually a magic light that's like above them that's kind of hovering and uh they all they all are loading they're loading boxes that are all marked it's similar to the box that you saw and you can hear one of them being like i swear if you drop another box i'll drop you like a box all right guys let's go cigarette dark and i'm gonna tell put all put out all your cigarettes i'm not smoking though okay <laughs> it's out i um, i, I light a cigarette that I found on the ground and then crush it. <laughs> Good. Now they can't see us coming. Yeah. Um, I'm going to... Uh... Yeah, can we activate stealth mode? Yeah, can I go stealthy? Yeah, everybody roll me a stealth roll who is who is going stealthy. Clink. Clink. What do I roll? <laughs> oh, yeah, no, it's fine. We're in... We're in, we're in, we're in your stealth mode. It. Got it. Yeah. 18. Uh, 18 is, uh, is plenty. Let's see how everybody else does. 18. 16. We've got an 18, 18 to 16 in our cat. Uh, I lost my character sheet. There it is. Okay. Uh, that will be a total of 15. Okay. Plenty. I was hoping for one, one, just, <laughs> in there. Uh, but no, you guys have plenty. What, now that you've gone cigarette dark, it's, <laughs> It's, it's almost impossible, next to impossible in the storm to pick you all out, especially because you're all uh, dressed in different types of uh, blacks and grays. And, yeah, and we're all surely wait, crouching. Wait. I got this. And you're crouching. You definitely engaged our three mode. <laughs> and you, you approach this, this uh, you approach the end of the dock. They continue to work. They haven't noticed you. Good. Okay. You let us know when that eye icon begins to open. Yeah. <laughs> um, can we hear more of their conversation at all? Uh, you can hear the two at the top that they're they're two. Uh, there's three on top of the pier, and they're kind of grumbling to each other. And they're just like they're just like I can't believe we had to drag that old man and also all his junk hiding in these boxes to smuggle away. These seem like major plot points we shouldn't be talking about, but we're almost out of time. So, and like while we're all crouched, I turn and I'm like, "Oh, one man's junk, another man's trying to get it now." Guys, what did you think it meant before? Well, it that, that's not important. Okay, right, cool. The whisper. We could go of- full murder hobo and kill these fools now, or we can try and figure out where the old man is on the boat. I pull up my collar and whisper, perhaps if you like, I could distract them. Yeah, yeah okay, yeah, you do that. Hey, and while you do that, uh, see if you can get permission to record them in the middle of that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here, I have the form. Here's, do what here's, I a, pa- here's a paper, get them to sign this maybe, <laughs> if, you, if you can make no, it work no, into your No, no, you can do verbal consent. You can do verbal consent with your Yeah. Discussion. Whatever as, works. As I, as I, as I okay. take the paper from you, it gets obliterated by raindrops. Ah, fuck that then. <laughs> just, <laughs> um, ignore me. You're just, you got this. Yeah. All right. I will try. I'd like to stand up, uh, roll performance to sing. Whoa. Uh, and then in the rain. In yeah, the rain. Roll, <laughs> roll your roll your d twenty performance check before you sing, and then sing based on your roll. Don't tell us what your roll is, but just <laughs> play it out. I'm a bard. Um, <clears throat> in this. Rain, I see your pain. And I'm like slowly walking out of the darkness 
in this night, I can be your light. And I'll <laughs> create a light spell and on a on, on, on a trinket in my hand. And as I come into your peer right here, I would ask you, may I record you tonight? Uh, and whoever is the toughest of the bunch, I'd like to cast Dissonant Whispers on them with that as well. Okay, we'll get there in a second. Uh, okay. The the men, they all kind of drop the boxes and begin clapping, and one of them <laughs> in the boat is just like, no, you fools! Just tell it! Who is this man? Uh, and, uh, real quick, I need to figure out if... Um, uh, one of them is like, you can record whatever you want. I'm not crying, it's raining. <laughs> The other two are like, hey, come on, man. A real a real man doesn't cry. We stick to antiquated standards. I like I like I go to like stand up behind the boxes I and grab like, them. Pulls me back. <laughs> no, <in>. no. <laughs> I will I will I will I will hat cat the prestigitation to, to create sparkle letters over my head that says real men know how to cry. <laughs> and that one guy is like, you can record as long as you want, man. <laughs> um you uh, you uh, are casting dissonant whispers on on the toughest looking one. Another guy. Uh, uh before he aggro's them, can we yeah. maybe get behind them with our stealth checks? During during that performance, they're at the end of the pier, so mm -hmm. you can. <laughs> so it'd be pretty hard to stealth down the pier while still staying dry. I see I what will, you're talking I about. I will force you to roll another d20 if you want to get behind them to the, like they're at the end of the pier. There's a little bit more plank, I guess, before like it goes off into endless abyss of ocean. So, so, so <laughs> we, is it is it like a long pier and they're off on one side loading onto a boat type of thing? Yeah. Okay. Right, Could the we goal go is to get onto water? the boat, not behind them specifically. You can hear that there are somebody yelling at them from the boat, and he seems to be going up the ladder right now. Is the boat taller than the pier? No. Okay, so it's sort of like equal. That's like a jump. Or lower. So it's like it's like pier, boat. Oh. This right here is a good thirty feet. Whoa, oh, that's, that's a, a tall pier. pier. Jeez, that's a short boat. Feet. I'm gonna keep gauging how long this is by reaction and time. <laughs> What's a reasonable height in here? Twenty feet it sounds great. We're gonna we're just gonna jump twenty feet, take feet. two d six. The totally difference fun. between low tide and high tide here is ridiculous. It's immense. <laughs> Somehow during a massive storm, it's super low tide. <laughs> it's, a, it's a gale that's pulling it away first. Oh, I know what this means. Okay, yeah. then can we my cat hair start to lift up on my back yeah they do there's a tsunami coming yes <laughs> water's drawing away you've never seen a boat that low against a pier before oh no i rolled a I rolled a two i don't care that much then <laughs> <laughs> it's a reasonable height it's a reasonable height 30 yeah. feet <laughs> um okay i guess we should attack but can right? the strike or... team stealth jump onto the boat i'm slowly disappearing you, you it's yeah you can jump 30 feet onto the boat. I don't know about stealth jump. I mean, yeah, you can you can roll you can roll for it. Roll for okay, it. Okay, great. Yeah. Athletics or acrobatics? Roll me stealth for your stealth okay. part of the jump and then roll me acrobatics for your or athletics, either or you can choose for your for your jump part of the stealth jump. Mm -hmm. So two part, it's like a combo noun like German, so you're doing both, your stealth and jumping. Yeah. My first one was an 8 Perfect. and my second one was a 12. Okay, give me a second. I don't know how, what the DC is, so I'm going to just figure it out by this. That's fine. You got a 12, so I'm uh -huh. going to roll against your 12. And Great. if if I roll if I roll higher, then your your jump is not going to happen. I'm going to make this really epic right here. You're going it's fading in and out nothing. You never know what might That's so epic. Uh, 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 so epic. Uh, I roll two. lower. I roll lower. You're fine. <laughs> no, <laughs> they totally notice you because you say Geronimo before your jump. Uh, <laughs> But you, but you do jump onto the boat, and you take not as much damage because you slip on the water, and it kind of like makes you do a little tumble that like takes okay. 
the and so you only take uh six points of damage. Okay, I meant to do that. Yeah, great. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And Perfect. when you tumble, you tumble into uh the side of of a uh, room in the boat and you're kind of pressed up against the glass like and then you're looking inside the room and you see a man tied up in the corner. Does he have one mustache on one side of his face and a beard on the other? No, he has a hood over his face. Oh, no. First mate. But drawn right, on the hood is half of a mustache and half of a beard. But does the hood <laughs> have feathers? No. Oh, okay. But a man climbing the ladder who just gets to the top just in time to see somebody jump off onto his boat <laughs> does have a hood with feathers. What? And like when I see him, like I point my sword accusingly at him and I'm like, I have a question. <laughs> what do you call that? <laughs> <laughs> what is that garment? It's a cloak. I added three feathers for personality. Agree All to right. disagree. <laughs> Goodness. Agree to disagree. Uh, this uh, classroom, does it have a door? Yes. And it's locked. Yeah, okay. Um, when it gets back around to me, I'll unlock that thing. Yeah, I think this is the time. Roll, everybody roll initiative. I think it's probably, a good time. probably initiative time. Woo! Eight. Let's talk about that. Nine. Eleven. I'm guessing this is a D20 plus the initiative? Yes. 15. Perfect. 23. Okay, so anybody anybody a 20 or higher? 23. Um, anyone a, uh, a 15 or higher? 15. Thank you. Uh, anyone? Anyone? Ten or higher? Eleven. Perfect. I don't even have to ask him. You are at the end of initiative, Mister Fell. <laughs> You're looking out across the dock. There's rain. It's buffeting everybody. A big wave comes and crashes up, <laughs> lifting the boat five feet. So it's a reasonable 25 <laughs> up. And the water sprays from the wave crashing against the pier. Oh. The salt kind of goes and it catches the magical light and creates a slight rainbow that dissipates into smoke. What are you doing while these thugs look over you and they're all pulling out weapons and things? And they're oh, like, he word. He said the stat word. Kill it. <laughs> he, he said he said thug which is a monster um oh, no, yes. no i i've not created monster blocks for any of these good yeah <laughs> that means they're not people kill them <laughs> <laughs> um uh i will maintain to my to my to my last choice of uh casting distant whispers on uh whoever i size up to be uh a a, a leader of monks these Roll me, roll me a uh, sizing up leader check. Uh, seventeen plus. You can tell the guy with the three feathers. The other, the other ones are wearing cloaks that don't have feathers. Ah, the feather trick! I knew it. I've often used feathers to distract, <laughs> but this time the feathers are too direct. So what is, what's the dissonant whisper? Is it wisdom? Uh, yes, they make a wisdom saving throw. On a fail, they take 3d6 points of psychic damage yeah. and must immediately use its reaction. Darn it. Yeah. <laughs> he passed hard. He passed hard. Uh, did this anything happen on a save? Oh, they take half as much damage, but they don't you have to roll move away. Damage. Roll that damage. That's not a lot. That's a lot. That's not what that is. Okay. And Mrs. Uh, Bell, a damage calculation. I want you to tell me what you whisper that only he hears dissonantly. <laughs> but also reverb. know that it wasn't as effective as you wanted it to be. So take that into account. Yes. Uh, so with uh, halved, eight damage. Um, I, I, I whisper, 
you are so alone. <clears throat> Sorry, terrible. <laughs> Who's the leader of these uh, peep, uh, thugs? Voice crack. Brutus turns to you and he goes, I'm not alone. I have my men and you have a crybaby. And yes. Brutus turns to attack you. Me? Fantastic. Yes. What's your armor class? Not a lot. It is 14. Perfect, perfect. Dan, what's your armor class real quick? Uh, mine, 18. Kith, what's your armor class? 16. Okay, perfect. I have them all written down. Uh, Mr. Fell, you take a club to the face. And it hits you for uh, seven points of club damage. Oh no! Yeah, you feel like you uh, you you know uh, spent a whole night on the town with a drink, uh, dancing. Uh, could I use one of my bardic inspiration dice to reduce that amount of damage? Yeah, you can absolutely. And as you're doing that, smiles. You watch. Uh, you watch. Um, uh, Mister Fell kind of seems to to cast some spells. His light flickers <laughs> on and off, and then a man just comes over and clubs him in the face. No, <laughs> uh, I rolled uh, my bardic inspiration dice a six, a d six, right? Yeah, you you calculate how much gets taken off on your damage side. Uh, yeah, I was, I was just trying to see if it, if it was a, a d six. Okay, so I rolled uh, five total. So smiles. What are you doing? Okay, I'm still on the pier, correct? Yeah. Take five less damage. Okay, um, what's uh, in my immediate surroundings? I, I'm, is there, like, any, like, uh, like nets or, like, hooks or anything? Any fishing sailor stuff? You know, there's a big lobster cage, and, and it has the attached buoy, and there's <laughs> also maybe a lobster still in it. Cool. Okay. <laughs> um, can I take out the lobster? Yes. Okay. How proficient are you at handling lobster? Is that a skill? <laughs> no, it's more yes. of a, it's a question for your, for your character. I eat lobster every night. Okay. So you're I run a very popular newspaper. <laughs> yeah. Great. Yeah. You, you have a, uh, you have a lobster equipped. Okay, great. Um, you I'm also gonna... have a whole bunch of fish that I've given you at this point. True. Okay. Um, I'm gonna charge at the guy who clubbed Gabe with Mr. the lobster, and I'm gonna yeah. use the claw to uh, get his get him in the face. Yeah. Roll a roll roll a d20. Lobster. Lobster roll. Seventeen. Yeah. yeah you absolutely. You go up the claw. You're holding the lobster from the back in exactly yeah. where it can't get at you, but it's so angry because you're shaking it. And it just, yeah. it's, not, it's not about that life. And uh, you're going up to this guy and the and lobster's so angry and you just put it up to his face. And he's like, ah, and immediately grabs onto his nose. And it <laughs> in the lobster claw, roll me a D6. Actually, D6. You're, yeah, roll me a D6. Two. Yeah, and it just, it snips a chunk of, out of his nose. <laughs> Come on. Oh my God. That's so brutal. Yeah, and he's like, he's like, ah, lobsters. I'm allergic to shellfish. <laughs> Shouldn't have been a sailor, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Blood and rain and tears trickle down his face, mixing into a cocktail of regret. <laughs> yeah. Tasty. Dan, what are you doing? Oh man, I see, I see Brutus like wailing on my my what i've recently decided bff mr fell and uh i'm and making fun of him for crying or making fun of me he was making fun of crying <laughs> uh, and i'm just like i'm like shields out swords drawn i'm like oh buddy we're gonna get in touch with those emotions <laughs> and uh i'm going to uh i'm just going to position myself so that i'm within five feet of uh of mr fell so i can use my protection fighting style Oh. And uh, I'm going to uh, sm- uh, I'm going to smack this boy with my uh, <laughs> with my with my long sword. Um, Diplomatically, you're using diplomacy. I'm yeah. using diplomacy, so I am going to smite him. Um, let's see. Does a it sounded like you broke things? Yeah. <laughs> you, what kind of metal dice are you using? 
I'm using this really neat little 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 dice tray that oh yeah that's why it sounds um, like you're punishing your table yeah um I got a 14 total you go up and you swing your you swing your your sword and as you do he produces a shield that was inside of his dark robes that you didn't realize he had and he deflects your your sword strike off and he looks you in the eyes and he says he says you can cry if you want to you can leave your friends behind <laughs> Uh, but, uh, <laughs> it's, it's the thug's turn and all three of them are on the dock uh, so Brutus yells to one of them like stop her from taking our boat uh, and so one oh, of them going, that was an option yes <laughs> <laughs> saw you so one of them is going to go down the ladder or, or jump down we're going to find out no he's going down the ladder he's doing that really cool slide thing where he grabs he rolled a 20 so he like just grabs the slide, slides down but like slows himself down at the exact right point but he does it um, while wearing gloves so he doesn't get any splinters or hurt his feet. Oh. And then immediately gets down, takes off the ladder sliding gloves and puts uh-huh. them in the ladder sliding glove pocket that he has. Right. I need to get me some of those. You got to keep things compartmentalized. That's the only way to adventure these days. It's the only way. He, he is going to confront you and uh, he's confronting you specifically with an axe. Oh, God. No, not the face. Yeah. Um, he uh, aims for your face, and you go. Oh. What do you say? I, I said, "Not the face." Yeah, and, <laughs> and just he swings right at it, and you dodge. You're like, "Not the face!" And by dodging, his axe kind of wedges into <laughs> the side of the boat. He's ripping it out, and he's like, "I'm gonna hit you in the face with an axe." <laughs> and uh, then the other guys, we're gonna find out who they're going for. Um, they're gonna go for uh, one is um, is uh, smiles. And then the other one is going for Dan. Smiles. Good luck. Yeah, you're going to get hit uh, oh. with yeah, <laughs> a, a dagger. It's going to stab into you. Uh, yeah, and you're going to take uh, five points of dagger stab damage. He's stabbing you right in the kidney, which is... Oh, that's what that hurts. He needs those! Dan, the other guy's coming up to you, and he goes, he has a sword, and he swings it. And you just had your sword parried off the shield, but in that same parry movement, you parry his sword. Ooh. Yeah, so it's a little ding-ding action. And then it's Kith's turn. Kith, there's a person who's menacing you with an axe. Yeah, um, I'm not really... uh, Killing's not my forte. Uh, I'm going to bonus action disengage and just like slide across the glass wall and go to that door that I saw before all this madness took place. Do you tell him that it's not your forte? Yeah, yes, just just sliding backwards and hoping he doesn't hit, but using disengage to make sure he doesn't. That said, <laughs> action, I would like to try and pick this lock. Yeah, roll it and slide a hand. Slide a hand or thieves tools? Doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. I don't care, I don't care. I don't care, you don't care, it's fine. Um, <clears throat> 18. Yeah, plenty. You go up to the lock and you take out uh, a hairpin and because you're like, I don't use thieves tools. I got a slide of hand here, and you just stick in the hairpin. You don't even you just stick it in, and the lock just and <laughs> crumbles into dust around itself. And you open the door, and you're inside. The lock didn't actually crumble to dust; it just opened. You're inside. <laughs> okay. Well, I use my action, so I'm just reaction. I'm gonna yell, "Hey, wake up!" It's the guy in the middle, and that's it. End turn. Yeah. Oh, the guy who's roped up. On on it in Sharpie. There's Can also free action. Pull the burlap bag off of his head. Yeah, you grab okay. the bag. Free action. I'm fine with that. You rip it away, and you see a man who's gagged and has one mustache side and one beard side, and then he also <laughs> has a really weird burn pattern across his face, and he's wearing a shirt that says, uh, "It says uh, coming soon to Pixar new sequel." And you, uh, <laughs> you see this man, he's tied up. And uh, Mr. Felt, your turn. Um, fantastic. Uh, <clears throat> There's a man in front of you. His name's Brutus. He has a club. He just brutally clubbed you and then he, deflected he with a shield. He pulled out a sword. Um, he did get his nose snipped by a lobster. 
<laughs> uh, so, so with that, um, I'm going to, if I can find my, my spells, I really don't have any uh, attack attacks. I'm a magician after all. Um, I had it. There it is. There we go. Uh, I'm going to, uh, take a half step back. Yeah. And pull up my top hat. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, and caged within is an entire cat, which flies into his face. <laughs> right. Um, and I cast blindness on him as the yeah. cat tries to scratch out his eyes. Yeah. Uh, what's the what's the save on that? Uh, Constitution oh, save. Blind. He's super blind. That Perfect. Cat, he, he was not ready for the cat in the hat, <laughs> and it comes out, and it's like. Red fish, blue fish. Uh, Mr. Fell has you fish. And then it blinds him. <laughs> and he's like, no, my eyes, my nose and my eyes, the two things that I most value in this world besides <laughs> money. <laughs> uh, and he's going to swing at you. And uh, at well, and, uh, well but, but before that, I'd like to use my oh. bonus action. Yes, please. Um, to uh, give Dan uh, inspiration. Inspiration, a D six. Uh, how, how do you give it to him? Give me give um, inspiration right now. You inspire I will, me every day. As I, as I, as I, as I, as I toss the cat forward, I go. The cat is out of the hat, but the magic is still within you. <laughs> you take that pent up energy, and it's just coursing through you. And you wait for your turn in initiative as Brutus swings. <laughs> <laughs> And Mr. Fell, he takes his club, he swings it. Mr. Fell uh, goes low. When the club goes high, the club goes low. Mr. Fell jumps, and then he lands. It seems like his footing's going to go as another club go- is coming for him. But it was all a feint. He's a magician, and he kind of, like, teleports slightly backwards and looks like a tree for a moment, and then <laughs> comes himself again, and then smiles. What are you doing? How many thugs are there? Is it just the one? There's one just, on you who's just trying to it, it stab you. He just stabbed you in the kidney. And then there's another oh, thug fuck. on uh, Dan who's trying to hit him with a sword. Then there's the Brutus on Mystifel. And then you know that another thug descended into the darkness on the ladder. You saw him put on ladder descending gloves. So you know he did it. <laughs> but you don't know where he went. Uh, Wait a minute. This guy, uh, you think, so is it reasonable to assume that this guy's still on the ladder? Uh, no. Oh. <laughs> with 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 uh, gloves of water descending, you can descend a ladder very quickly. Yeah, yeah right. it's better than as a, as a bonus action. Really yeah. got to get me a pair of one of those. Course. Yeah. All right. Well, I got to deal with this guy smack in front of me. Right. Um, I want to do a kick, but I want to do a very specific kind of kick. Yeah. Uh, I'm if I'm facing right in front of him. Yeah. Uh, I want to do basically like a windmill kick where my foot goes across his head, across his face. Yeah, roll a d20. Okay. Great. Would that be strength or dexterity? 13. Yeah, and then adding your dex, you're at a 16. So I'm going to say you're able to, you windmill kick, and you hit him first with the kick and then with the lobster as you're landing. (laughs) Just a lobster slap. and. And he he falls off the pier, not on the boat side. Oh no! Yeah, uh, that's a win. Hey Phil, can you give me a guy falling off a pier sound? No. That's <laughs> <laughs> what he <laughs> cried and he fell. No. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, and I say yes. Uh, and then uh, Dan. Ooh, I'm going straight. I'm going straight for big old blind old Brutus. Yeah, he's blind. Yeah. Raw advantage. Using this ooh, with with inspiration. Oh my goodness! Thank God for advantage. Um, Seventeen. Yeah, that's oh. enough. You take uh, diplomacy into your own hands. So that's going to be and uh, and now that I've, I've you know reading the rules from my character works, now I can expend my spell slot to use smite. I'm gonna smite this boy. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna smote him. Smote, uh, smote. So that's gonna be. Seventeen damage. Sorry, uh, 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 sorry. Nineteen damage with my strength. Okay. Uh, explain to me how Brutus dies. 
Oh, oh man. Slime. There's a cat that's constantly clawing his eyes. He has a huge cut from a lobster across his nose. Yeah, uh, I'm going to like like as we uh, 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 I'm gonna like slice my sword across his mouth and like smell no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. I smite me. <laughs> I, 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 I Sparta, I Sparta kick him like yeah. off the docks. Yeah, I, was, I thought you were you were like like uh doing the the, the 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 rocket kick up in the air. Oh yeah, that's how I do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, cannon. As his face is falling into different pieces, like sliding into like it's been cut like a uh, uh, like different chips of a potato. Uh, he, he, uh, his last bit of his tongue before it falls off is like, is like, no, you'll, you'll never, you'll yeah. never defeat me. Oh. Then he hits the water and dies instantly. Sharks come and eat his body. Uh, the other thugs lose their will to fight after seeing this gruesome, brutal, gruesome, gruesome thing happen to Brutus. And, um, you all, because it's, uh, 7-Eleven, uh, sponsored. Uh, you all, uh, you all uh, managed to find this man in the corner who you identified as Nemo. Guys, I found Nemo. Oh wow! But Bravo! You bring, um, I, bring that was enough damage to kill Brutus. Um, Nemo does tell you Brutus. It's like, oh, Brutus, he used to be my first mate. If to, to cover up half the mustache. Mm-hmm. You, Br- Brutus used to be my <laughs> first mate. I'm gonna commit to the bit. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> he used to be my first mate, but sadly, all he ever wanted was money. Yeah, so he learned that I had some magical trinkets that would lead him to the sacred world of Mapolis. <gasps> Mapolis. Oh, yes. Right? The, the, city of, the city of maps, where uh, they're all infinitely valuable to map collectors everywhere. I had heard it was just a legend. They told me it didn't exist. <laughs> I knew it was real. <laughs> I'd only ever heard it in bits of my routine that I made up. <laughs> you, yes, I, he never found, I think, the, the compass. I left it behind so he would never find the way. Are you talking about this compass? What? Yes. Clearly, we are the prophesized ones. I can't argue with that, and also you saved my life, so I will give you the compass, and thus, the key to Mapolis. <gasps> Therefore, Mapolis. if Storm Giant Games has another convention next year, and we come back to do a sequel, we'll do it in the city of Mapolis. <laughs> oh, oh I can't City wait. of Mapolis. In the meantime, you've got a kid to adopt, sir. Yes, I do. Yes, and, you and we must... Go- we well, must rush you down to the orphanage now. Yeah, we yeah. all pick him up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like fireman carrying him right down. <laughs> adopt a child! Get out, get out of the way! Adopt the child nobody. before it turned evil. Uh, <laughs> I must blunt the edge of her backstory. Yeah. <laughs> As you get there, you notice that Pearl is just about to light a whole bunch of stuff on fire, but she <laughs> stops because her father has arrived. <laughs> She's her. sitting there with a with a, a, a tank of helium with like the compressor, <laughs> like I'm ready. <laughs> Who left all that helium and compressor with untended? Un- Look, kid? we oh, who we the s- hell did that? I'm smoking three. We cigarettes. seen transitioned. <laughs> I, I, I wasn't able to pack up my things and we seen transition so quickly. Right. And it, it for the first time in in what seems like years, uh it, it stops raining and it's a beautiful Whoa. yeah, it's a beautiful just and the sun comes out as this girl is adopted by Nemo and is about to live a happy life. Um and Say cheese. <laughs> Uh, that's gonna be our outro. Yeah, I think the say cheese. Everybody, everybody, real quick, we're gonna do one more say cheese. Everybody, take a pose. Say queso. Star swipe. Star swipe. Star swipe. Perfect. Uh, yeah. <laughs> nobody, nobody lose those poses. Uh, no. So, uh, real quick, before we we end everything, again, a big thank you to Storm Giant Games for having us. This was super fun. I was so glad. That with thank you guys for coming and guesting with me i have some people who are really awesome guesting with me and you can find them at uh inver if you give your slash inverlock i-n-v-e-r-l-o-c-h awesome seth 
Uh, Twitter at Mr. Monyet, M O N Y E T T E, Mr. Monyet. Uh, YouTube, Mantooth901. And normally performing at Village Theater in Atlanta when there's not a pandemic. Uh, Gabe. Uh, Just make something up. The the Goblins and Growlers Discord, um, which you can find uh, access to on uh, through Goblins and Growlers, uh, the Facebook Facebook dot com slash Goblins Growlers, and or on uh, their website goblinsandgrowlers dot com. Um, Links to their Discord, you can find me on there. Uh, Everyone, you're free to uh, direct message me because DMs love DMs. Eric. Uh, go to Facebook and search Whose Role Is It Anyway? Uh, and we, you can also find us on the Thunder Grunt Podcast Network. That's one word. All of our episodes uh, that we've released as recordings are on our Facebook page, so you can go check them out there. They're lots of fun to listen to while you wait out the way. Yeah. And, and yeah. one last thing to plug. Uh, if you're ever in Atlanta, you got to check out 97.1 The River. It's a uh, classic rock station. It's got some great hits. No, it's not. <laughs> it is. Yeah, that is, a, that is an Atlanta classic rock station that we are unaffiliated with, but got some great hits. <laughs> oh, it's like here in Virginia, we got 96.5. Anyone else smell that? It's Last, awesome. Lastly, I'm with Goblins and Growlers. Oh, you can find us. I'm sure it still is uh, linked to the, the thing. We have a code oh. for it. We usually have booths when we do it at conventions. Since this one's a digital, we have a digital booth, which means you don't pay for shipping because you're coming to our booth. Digital booth? Use the code DigiBoo. So use the code and uh, get yourself a free shirt. Maybe Space Wolf Daddy, like Phil has in the background. Phil's also one of the Goblin Growlers with me. So we're going to sign off saying um, thank you again. Uh, thank you guys for, for spectating. Listen to the Quid Pro Roll podcast if you enjoyed any of this. Alex is our DM and she's the greatest. Uh, and yeah, thank you, uh, Storm Giant. I think they're supposed to jump in here. Otherwise, we can continue. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I've been being sneaky. Thank you guys so much. That was freaking awesome. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put us off there. Thanks a lot. It was, it was great. We'll have a link to, uh, we'll have a link to the stream. We'll share it with you guys here. Uh, when love we're, your shirt. When we awesome. posted. Thanks. It's like cactus camo for when I hide in the yeah. really dense desert. And it has <laughs> really nice shoulders to it too. Those are natural. Yeah, a lot of these or something. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys. Thanks a lot. That was awesome.